Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's ACP Live Remote Non-CE Offering. I'm Jody Berzinski. Today's Non-CE webinar is part of ACP's Live Remote Clinical Webinar Series. This includes a series of both CE and non-CE courses that have been designed to provide additional remote resources to our facility partners. The clinical services team has worked to create a high-quality remote experience for you. Today's non-CE topic is overcoming the barrier of PPE to communicate how much you care with body language. I would like to now introduce today's presenter, Shannon Penizak, MSPT and Clinical Program Consultant. Thank you, thank you, Jody. Hello, everybody out there, nice to see you. I can't see any of you, so this is always very difficult for me because somebody who lives on body language and seeing everybody, you know, um, <laughs> I love how, how I can't ever see anybody, but it's, I'm so happy that you were able to join me today. Um, we are going to start overcoming the barrier of PPE. PPE is here to stay, I think, especially in the areas where we're treating patients, we're treating, um, and how to communicate how much you care with body language. Um, so I hope this is really informative. I'm going to throw on a quick mask here just so we can kind of see the differences and, and see what we can learn when we are masked because a lot of us will be masked and shield sometimes. Um, so I'm going to throw this mask on and I just want to kind of uh, go through certain things that we can look for uh, while we have PPE on. So first of all, if you look right now, the things that you can see, number one, the side of the eyes, the crow's feet, definitely something that um, I look to first. That is my first go-to. Um, and we'll see why in a, little, in a minute, but if you, as soon as you smile, if you bring your hands up to your eyes with your mask on and smile, a really good big smile, you can feel immediately you get those crinkles in your eyes. I love those crinkles. <laughs> I kind of have learned to enjoy my crow's feet because it really shows how genuine a smile could be because the smile will always meet the eyes and show crinkles. The second thing that we notice is the eyebrows, right? You can definitely notice if the eyebrows are going up, if the eyebrows are going down, you can kind of see and how that relates to really the top of the forehead, hence why I have my hair back. Um, you probably will have a shield on, you might, but you could still see the top of the forehead and the eyebrows and how they're moving. I always look in the middle of the nose area here because that kind of gives away a lot. Um, if you see somebody kind of giving you this kind of look, you know, you kind of know right away they're a little confused and you'll always notice that right here in the middle. Um, and then I look to the neck. Um, typically, we carry tension. If you think of where we carry tension, it's up in the upper back, and it, our neck always tightens. So the neck is definitely a place that we can go to. Um, typically, when we're like nervous about something, our jaw clenches, and if our jaw clenches, our neck immediately gets tight. So those are the specific areas that I always look to, and we're going to go through those individually. But I want to make sure I want to take off my mask so you guys can all hear me. Um, as we go through some of these tips um, and, and things, we're going to go into more of these in depth. So some quick tips to build trust would be acknowledge the PPE right away. You know, a lot of these patients are on medicine. Um, they're nervous. They don't understand maybe why this is happening, why you're coming in fully gowned and, you know, with full PPE on. And so right away, the first thing to do is acknowledge that you have it on. Um, go over to the patient and acknowledge that it may be intimidating, um, but really explain to them that you do want to understand what's going on with them and understand how we can kind of work on treatment. Um, always face the patient. You know, everybody knows this, but looking at the patient, ensuring that they can communicate back to you. And the second thing is most importantly, and this is the most important, is make sure you make eye contact. So look directly into their eyes. Um, I have a four-year-old now, and that is the one thing that I feel has helped out tremendously is when I make her look into my eyes and make on eye contact with me to just make sure that she's really understanding what I'm saying. Um, and then don't get in front of a light. So if you're in front of a window, if you, if you know, I kind of turn here, that backlight, you can't see me as well. Um, it's the same thing in patients' rooms when you're with a patient. Um, so the best thing you can do is try to get better provider light on your face. And if you get it on your face, they can see your face a little bit easier and kind of understand. 
Um, even if the patient really may not see your facial expressions because of the PPE, they feel the nonverbal communication, which will be transmitted. So nonverbal communication is a big aspect of what we can use to communicate with our patients now. Um, allow the patient time to pick up on the nonverbal communication. So it's going to be disguised through the PPE. So it's important to allow them extra processing time to what you're saying. Slow down when you're speaking so that they can understand what you're saying. And be responsive. Um, really intentionally use gestures, body language. Use your hands. You can see my arms. Use your arms and your hands to communicate that body language. Okay, so those are some tips. Um, uh, body language in general provides an amazing amount of information um, and that is into what other people are thinking if you know what to look for. Um, a lot of research has been done on body language, so really only 7% of the communication is actually words. And this is right out of UCLA research. So 7% is what we say 38% is the tone of your voice, and 55% comes from just your body language in general. So if you have good body language and you're, they can under pick up on the tone of your voice, really it's super, super important for them to feel that kind of comforting body language. Um, and then top teams, including Ritz-Carlton, test for emotional intelligence. Um, and they know the power of the unspoken signals that you have in communication. If anybody needs a good definition for emotional intelligence, my favorite is it's really the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions and handle interpersonal relationships empathetically. So with empathy. Um, you know, it's, I, I don't know if anybody's been on any of my other lectures that I've done over the monthly calendars, but um, as you all might be aware, I'm highly, highly, you know, invested and it's, it's definitely, you know, one of the most important things that I love to learn about is emotional intelligence. Um, and I learned a lot um, through a gentleman, his name is Horst Schultz. He was an old CEO or COO of Ritz Carlton. Um, and what he taught me, I actually was able to take on some meetings with him and what he taught me was, you know, we actually can pick up on somebody within three seconds of seeing them. And they're looking to things like your eyes, they're looking to things like your smile, they're looking to things like, and they make a decision, you know, within those couple of seconds of meeting somebody. Um, and it's really amazing to see how much of that is body language because, you know, they're looking, you kind of get a feel when you go and meet somebody and, and comfort. Sometimes you feel comfortable speaking to somebody right away. Um, you know, sometimes you feel hesitant. Um, but all of that has to do with your emotional intelligence and what you pick up on and your body language and what you kind of, you know, give off. Um, so we're going to kind of go into body language a little bit more and how to make patients more comfortable with just your body language alone. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is a crossed arm or leg. So um, if I stand here and I have my arms crossed as soon as I go in to talk to a patient, of course, what do you think that can, can resemble? It kind of resembles some kind of resistance, right? If you walk in or you're talking to somebody, or even if you're standing talking to somebody and they have their arms crossed in front of you, that typically kind of puts you at a little, you know, oh, something, uh, maybe they're not comfortable with what I'm saying. Um, these are physical barriers that suggest the other person is not open to what is being said. Um, and your body language can tell the story. So really, if you walk into a patient and you see them immediately cross their arms and legs, the best thing you can do is really come down to their level. So if they're seated, you know, crouch down next to them or get a chair and sit next to them. Um, talk very slowly to ensure that they understand what's being explained to them and why you're there and what you're doing. Um, and then one of my favorites is in if they really don't want to uncross their arms, get them to see something that you would have to, you know, give the thumbs up signal to. So they would have to uncross their arms and, you know, kind of give you the thumbs up. So ask them a question and tell them to give you the thumbs up or the thumbs down, depending upon, you know, what you're finding and or asking them to do. And that will immediately get them to uncross their arms. And sometimes that immediate uncrossing of the arms gets them more open to what you're going to say. Um, so that's definitely the first thing. We have full PPE on. The first thing is look at their arms. The second thing is my probably most favorite thing is, like I said, real smiles crinkle the eyes. 
So if you really give a genuine smile, and even if you have the mask on, you're going to be able to see that crinkle or those crow's feet that I've come accustomed to really liking now. <laughs> um, because the mouth can lie, but the eyes can't. So things that you say or things that people say, um, you know, a genuine smile can reach the eyes, it crinkles the skin, and it creates those crow's feet. So really, anybody that is crow's feet, look at it as a good thing because it shows you our genuine smiler and you smile a lot. Um, so smiling so patients can see the crinkle in your eyes, even when you're wearing a mask, can be very comforting to them. And that is definitely the first place I go to when I'm talking to somebody with full PPE on is I go to their eyes and the crow's feet and I look to see if those are crinkling. And again, speak very slowly through the mask to engage your patient more because speaking slowly so that they can kind of comprehend, it takes a couple seconds to comprehend when you have full PPE on. So really, really important to kind of slow down your speech. So look for those crinkles and be happy that you have them. <laughs> um, the next thing we're gonna kind of look at too is body language to you know help make patients more comfortable is copying body language. So if you're in a conversation with somebody and they go to touch your arm and you go to touch your arm and you know that kind of is sometimes very comforting and that's also called mirroring. Or if you smile and then they smile, it's a mirroring and mirroring body language is something people do unconsciously when they feel a bond. So really, it's actually a good thing when they're doing the same thing you're doing. It's a sign that the conversation is going well and that the listener is receptive to what you're saying. So it's really actually look for mirroring and, and look to see um, if your patient is mirroring what you do. And that actually tells you that they're much more comfortable with what you're telling them. Um, it offers comfort to the patient when the therapist mirrors what they are expressing. So not only do you want the patient to mirror what you're doing, but you wanna be mirroring what they're doing too to offer comfort um, in what you want them to do. And then posture, you know, we talked about the neck and we talked about like the, you know, upper trap area. Um, posture tells the story. So, you know, if we go into a, a crouched over posture with our arms bent, we kind of, you know, signal that resistance. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, if we go into really erect posture, um, giving gestures actually with palms down instead of, um, you know, an open talking with your hands, expansive gestures being very comforting. Um, you know, I learned, I took the behind the scenes tour when we were in Disney World one year and I thought a very um, interesting fact about Walt Disney was he actually, if you walk up to anybody who works in Disney, they should never, if somebody, if you ask where something is and you point to it, Walt Disney always wanted them to point with even two fingers. Um, something so small and simple, but he thought it was rude to point to something with one finger. So he always asked, you know, all of the employees, if somebody asks where something is, point with two fingers, open up your hands, show them where it is, or even walk them there if needed. Um, so really, really important to do really great gestures, stand up straight with your shoulders back, maximize the space that you're in when explaining what's gonna happen to this patient. Maximizing the space you're in actually comforts them too because it kind of lets them know you're in control and you know what you're doing. Um, maintaining good posture can promote engagement. So it shows you you're engaged, it shows you you know what you're doing and you're happy to do it. Um, and then again, body language tells the patient that the therapist knows what they're doing is very comforting. So it's really, really important to mat, you know, look at your posture, look at yourself in the mirror, um, and make sure you kind of comfort the patient by maximizing it and do, doing your gestures openly. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is the eyes again. So not only are we looking for the crinkle in your eyes, but you want to look directly into the patient's eyes. On average, research has shown Americans will hold eye contact for 7 to 10 seconds. People will hold eye contact longer when they're actively listening. So if you're actively listening to a conversation and you're computing what they're saying, that eye contact will be longer than seven to 10 seconds. Um, it's reassuring when the therapist comes down to the patient's level and looks them in the eye to explain something. And really what we are even seeing nowadays, which I think is super great is 
um, I'm sure you guys all have seen online where the therapist will even put like a photo of their self smiling underneath on their name tag so that they know what the therapist looks like underneath the mask. So, you know, here I am masked, here I am non-masked with a smile. And that kind of comforts patients and kind of gives them kind of that, oh, that's what she looks like underneath all of that PPE. Um, so I love that. And I love even those masks that you're seeing now. Um, you know, I've been reading about them where you can actually even see through the mask. So you're able to see, you know, what the therapist is doing underneath. Um, and that kind of comforts them too. Um, there's those raised eyebrows. They can signal, signal discomfort. So there are three main emotions that will make the person's eyebrows. So we, even though we have full PPE on, we can still, you know, see what's going on with their eyebrows. Um, surprise, worry, and fear. All three of those emotions will raise your eyebrows. So if somebody, if you're in a conversation with a patient and all of a sudden they raise their eyebrows to the conversation and it shouldn't evoke surprise, worry, or fear, there might be something else going on. Um, so noticing when the patients are fearful. So if you're in a conversation, you come in and say to a patient, hey, we're going to take you for a walk today, and you immediately see their eyebrows raised, you know, and they're giving you this, you know, kind of deer in headlights look. Um, really, that's how we know the patient is fearful and worried, and it might be a cue to really explain again. So sit down with them on their level, look them in the eyes, explain exactly what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Um, and this really can kind of put the patient at more ease um, and even demonstrate for the patient too. If you demonstrate what you're typically going to do with them, so if you actually show them instead of telling them, um, showing them kind of puts them at ease because a lot of times once they see, you know, instead of just hearing words, it makes it a lot more comforting for the patient. And then one of the, the kind of last ones is exaggerating nodding. So do you ever have a conversation with somebody and they're kind of talking and all of a sudden, um, you know, it's one of these. Um, it's one of those where, uh, you know, they start talking and they'll be excessively nodding as you're talking and kind of gives shows that they have a little anxiety. So it's about following instructions if they're worried or about gaining approval. Um, it's really, really important to, uh, you know, really look for excessive nodding, making sure if they're worried about gaining your approval or if the patient is excessively nodding, you might want to stop exactly what you're telling them, re-explain the desired action or the activity. And then the last one is a clenched jaw. Um, a clenched jaw is really signaling stress. So like we talked about, we're not going to be able to really see the jaw with the full PPE mask on, but what that jaw, that clenched jaw will do is it'll emulate in the neck. So it'll tighten that neck and you'll start to see the scalenes kind of pop out. Um, and a furrowed eyebrow are all signs of stress and discomfort. So really the patients might mind, you know, um, what you're saying and you might want to kind of stop 